Okay, so in this video we're going to be talking about how the environmental quality or the quality of the environment and physical and mental health can impact both our material and non-material living standards. So as we progress through this video, your idea is to think about all right, what's the importance for both our material and our non-material living standards of preserving our environment and how can health, imp health impact both material and non-material living standards. So environmental quality, when we're talking about environmental quality, that can include things like preserving renewable and non-renewable non resources. Um, so we can sustain life and act, humans can have access to resources that are used in the production process. So one of the key things is that natural resources are used in the production process. So part of environmental quality is sustaining these goods and services like oil um, in particular that's used in the production process. It's also about ensuring humans can access natural resources in the future that we, um, that we enjoy. So things like rainforests and nature walks um, are common access resources and um, the Great Barrier Reef. So these are common access resources that humans enjoy and take pleasure from. So that's part of environmental quality. Um, it's also reducing the incidence of negative externalities that impact the natural environment. So that's like reducing the incidence of like droughts and cyclones and floods and things like that. So when you think of the word environmental quality, it's about preserving renewable and non-renewable resources used in production, preserving common access resources that humans enjoy free of charge, and preventing the incidence of negative externalities and provide examples that can impact our living standards. So production and consumption activities can pollute the air we breathe, the oceans that we prov that provide the fish we eat and the land we use to grow food. So it's about preserving all of these things. Um, in terms of its impact on living standards, so starting with material living standards, for example, if we reach peak oil, which basically means we've used over half of the world's oil supply, it can be harder to extract oil in the future. That can lead to reduced incomes for a lot of firms and higher costs of production, which can boost prices and reduce our material living standards. So a lack of oil can increase prices and hurt our living standards. If we pollute the atmosphere and the ecosystems, so particularly um, looking at um, fish and things like that, this can have ramifications for humans um, in terms of our access to goods and services. So for example, um, if we use herbicides in the production of foods, this can impact the body's health um, and its ability to heal and can lead to health problems. So the, by using herbicides in the production of food, that's one example of how it can lead to health problems for humans. It affects our living standards. Uh, and that can, and when, we ha when, we're, or un when we're unhealthy, that can reduce our productivity because we're sick and reduce our overall level of real GDP. So that's one link that you can make about if we use herbicides in food, that makes us sick, which makes us less productive, which reduces our real GDP and GDP per capita. Um, the increase in the price of oil is another example. In terms of non-material living standards, um, if we don't protect the environment, that can lead to the destruction of things like national parks. Um, and people feel energised and enjoy and take pride um, in these resources and makes them feel more relaxed. Those who live in cities will suffer from high air pollution, high levels of air pollution, which could affect their ability to breathe. And if the quality of food we eat is diminished and there's more toxins in the environment, this can also lead to you know, people feeling physically sick. So again, if you're looking at the environment and that affects the quality of food, that can affect our health and our non-material living standards. So air pollution, quality of food, and people not being able to enjoy national parks all affects our non-material living standards. Physical and mental health. So when we're looking at the impact that our physical and mental health has on our ability to access goods and services, because that's what's measured by material living standards, the key thing is that healthy people are more productive. They work longer hours, they solve more problems, they are more innovative and um, intelligent generally in terms of like what they can get done in the workforce, So and they're more likely to be entrepreneurial. So all of these things, being more productive, working harder, um, being more entrepreneurial, thinking of new, better and innovative new technologies, they come about from people being healthy. So those suffering illnesses are generally less able to participate in the, the workforce. They might reduce when they may no longer work in the labour force and rely on disability pensions and therefore basically they're likely to generate a lower income. So they won't be able to contribute to the production process and that can lead to less access to goods and services and can lead to lower incomes in the economy. So the first impact with health and material living standards is that we're less productive, less people are in the workforce and therefore that reduces our real GDP and GDP per capita. Key thing, less people in the workforce. Point two is that if people are sick, the government's going to have to provide subsidies and support to these people. So they'll be putting more money into health care and that will reduce the amount of funds available for other things. So what, they won't have enough money to spend on education and infrastructure. They may also have to increase taxes. So if more people are sick, then 
government spending more money, they raise taxes, people's disposable incomes fall, and therefore they have lower material living standards and purchasing power. So two key things is one, more people aren't generating a lower income because they can't actively participate in the production process and they're less productive. And two, the government's forking out more money for healthcare and therefore has less money for other things, as well as having to, people having to pay higher taxes. Um, in terms of being healthy, boosting our non-material living standards, the inability to participate in the workforce or undertake certain leisure activities may also reduce citizens' level of happiness. So now we're looking at non-material living standards. Those that can't participate in the workforce are more likely to be depressed, they're more likely to experience mental health problems, they're more likely to feel isolated from society. So there's some key reasons why it's important to preserve our health to ensure that it boosts our non-material living standards. Okay? People are more isolated, more likely to experience mental health problems, more likely to experience depression if they're not involved in the workforce. The problem is that, just on the flip side, focusing too much on material possessions can also hurt our mental and physical health. So if people are consistently feeling that they need to work harder to obtain more goods and services and have to work longer and longer hours, that can also hurt their emotional and physical needs. So sometimes, you know, in the pursuit of higher material living standards, we can hurt our physical and mental health. Um, this can impact people's relationship statuses if they're stressed all the time. They may not eat properly, and then that can have problems for their physical health as well. But it's important that you really, you know, articulate the benefits from being healthy or the costs of being healthy, unhealthy, sorry, for both material and non-material living standards. Thank you.